Well, a very good morning, everyone, to the seventh edition of the Smart City Expo World Congress here in Barcelona. This is the world's biggest meeting of city leaders, businesses, institutions, academics and social organisations, all here with the one aim to help define the future of our cities. My name is Georgie Barrett, I'm a tech journalist and broadcaster and it's my great pleasure to be your host over the next three days. Now as a broadcaster in the UK I host a consumer tech show called The Gadget Show where I'm very privileged to be able to travel around the world and test out the latest in AI and robotics um, and all things gadgets. Um, but as a journalist I explore a little bit more about how tech is um, shaping us both culturally and socially. I write for The Guardian. Um, um, the Mirror Tech City News, where I also report on some of the incredible startups that are coming out of London. London, of course, being my home and a city that, like all cities, rely on the cornerstones of innovation, sustainability and adoption. Now, Smart City Expo World Congress started with the question, can smart initiatives help cities flourish? Could cities actually help save the planet? And each year, we have debated different aspects of this question. So back in 2015, it was all about what drives urban innovation. And then last year, it was about making cities for citizens. How can citizens change cities themselves? This year, however, it is all about empowerment. Yes, expectations of city leadership are rising by the day and cities themselves often find themselves on this front line in battles over social equality, diversity and entrepreneurship. And in order to tackle these battles, we must foster collaboration between public administrations, companies, academic and research communities and of course people. Within this urban community in the Congress right now, it's a chance for cities to meet fellow cities, to pull their knowledge and to find leading edge solutions. Really this Congress in the next three days is about a place to share and research the best practices, to forge strategic partnerships and to promote out of the box thinking. Empowering people is very essential in creating not only smart cities but livable cities. So, to start with, I have the great pleasure in welcoming three leaders from around the world who are each going to share their vision on what they think the future of cities could be. So please join me in welcoming to the stage Gerardo Pizzarello, the Deputy Mayor of the Barcelona City Council, K.M. Hussein, who is the Minister in the Government from Bangladesh, and Gila Gamil, Minister for Social Equality of the Israeli Government. Welcome. So, first up at the podium is Gerardo Pizzarello. Mr. Pizzarello is the Deputy Mayor of Economy and Labour, Digital City and International Relations at Barcelona City Council. His work involves him in a strategic planning for the city, having formerly been a professor in constitutional law at the University of Barcelona. So please give Mr. Pizzarello a round of applause. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. Be very welcome to Barcelona. On, uh, on behalf of the City Council, I'm very happy to greet you and to say that this edition of the Barcelona Smart City Expo has reached new peaks. We are hosting nearly 700 exhibitors, more than 700 cities, more than 400 international experts, more than 17,000 participants. These figures are incredible, and events like the very special one we are opening today prove that Barcelona is a crucial technological hub of Southern Europe, a reference point in smart urban development. I have to say that the slogan of the, of the Expo reflects the spirit of the city government I represent. We strongly believe that when we empower cities, we also empower people. 
This is why we struggle for more local power in an interconnected world. In the 21st century, as more and more people come to live in cities, urban life is becoming human life by default. It is in the cities, and especially in the cities of the developing world, where the future of humanity as a whole will be decided. In this context, uh, city administrations have more responsibilities than ever for the well-being of the planet. We are aware that the challenges are huge, from economic reconstruction to social integration, from breathable air to affordable housing. And of course, there is a risk that of most metropolitan areas getting trapped in a vicious a circle of social and environmental distress. Digitalization, as you know, is bringing plenty of opportunities to counter this. Sam has called a second renaissance or a revolution. So let's win this revolution. How? Well, as revolution have always been won by the entrepreneurs, the creative people, the most advanced minds. They can help us so that the new tools such as virtual reality, new industry, and the capacity to generate and manage large quantities of data serve to improve public policies. But revolutions have also been won by leaders that stand for the values of democracy, to freedom, equality, fraternity, and technology. No technology, as smart as you can imagine, can compensate for political and moral regression. When you abandon the aim of fighting climate change or poverty or illiteracy, all sensors, models, and algorithms become useless. Worse still, they may become even dangerous. So we are interested in data and high-tech solutions for all, not just for the happy few, not to upgrade the well-off, but to push forward those who are struggling to build and rebuild their cities. We need to turn the planet of slums, of terribly depicted by the sociologist Mike Davis, into a planet of thriving neighborhoods in which basic needs are covered and people can live and learn and love in them. Our priority then should be not technologies for urban segregation or just for control, but for urban integration and the quality of life. This is the aim of the Barcelona Digital City Plan to ensure that cities, citizens, industry, business, and academia can work together to serve the people and maximize the social impact of technology. This is what we try to reflect in our stand, which is called linking talents, link it private and public, local and global. And talent for what? Don't, as I said, to tackle some of the most pressing challenges this city is facing right now housing, mobility, sustainability, social engagement, and innovation. We have grouped together municipal projects and local enterprises that give Barcelona solutions to problems that are shared across the urban world. We also want to link the talent from Barcelona with the talent in other parts of the world. We also want to open up corridors of innovation that allow Barcelona starts up to connect to other cities. This is why we are really happy to have here New York, for example. With them, we have reached an agreement to launch a joint challenge. The goal, to facilitate the mobility of blind people in streets on a single platform. The call has been success. 35 companies have presented projects, and tomorrow we will present the 10 finalists. But well, beyond politics, I have to say that we have a great city, that we love our city. Some of you already know it. Others will discover it during these days. So if you go out for a stroll when you leave this meeting, obviously don't miss jewels like uh, a Sagrada Familia or the Gothic Quarter. But if you want, you can also can along the mediatic building where we have a business incubator of high technological value that we have just opened. And it will be used to host these cross-landing projects. Or you can also visit the technological park that we have in one of the most popular districts of our cities, No Barris. In any case, I encourage you to explore, to share experiences and objectives, and to find complicities for new projects. 
Let's build together smarter cities for a better life. Thank you very much, and welcome to Barcelona. Thank you very much, Mr. Pizzarello. Brilliant tips there as well. I look forward to going out and exploring some of Barcelona, one of my favorite cities. Okay, our next speaker is Mr. K.M. Hussein. Mr. Hussein is a member of parliament from Bangladesh. As an MP, he's the Minister for Local Government, Rural Development and Cooperatives, and received a Journalist Associa Association Award for his contribution to the trade and industrial sectors of Bangladesh. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Hussein. Honorable Chair, Honorable Ministers, Honorable Mayors and City Leaders, Intellectuals, techno Technologists, Distinguished Delegates and Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen, good morning. It is indeed a pleasure to be here in an event like a Smart City Expo and World Congress 217 in a historic city like Barcelona. I would like to thank FIRA Barcelona, the organizers of this expo and World Congress for inviting me to attend this event. Dear friends, the smart city concept integrates information and communication technology, ICT, and various physical devices connected to the network to optimize and if you optimize the efficiency of urban services and maintain an interface with its citizens on a regular basis. Smart cities allow city officials to interact directly with both community and city infrastructure and helps monitor what is happening in the city and how the city is evolving. Ladies and gentlemen, we all know that the world has entered into an era, urban era. Presently, more than 50% of world population lives in urban areas. While cities could be prosperous economic centers and providers of greater access to opportunities, it could also bring devastating results for mankind and its habitat. If not planned and managed with effective policy, technology, and a sense of social justice. In other words, urbanization entails with new opportunities as well as many challenges. It is important to know that cities occupy only 2% of Earth's surface, but they accommodate about 50% of the world population consume 27% of the total generated energy and are responsible for 80% of the greenhouse effects. It is therefore imperative to efficiently exploit opportunities and address challenges that cities face in terms of urban planning, economic and social development. Respected audience, it is now evident that the traditional approach to urban development anchored in hard infrastructure building will not be enough for, befit for befitting for sustainable and inclusive development. The traditional approach is technology shy, restricted in scope and outdated in a sense that it is not geared to holistic and state-of-art approach. A smart city strives to use measures like innovations, better planning, a more prepared participatory approach, higher energy efficiency, better transport solutions, intelligent use of ICT, etc. A smart city not only optimizes the quality of urban life, but also contributes in improving governance indicators like accountability, 
transparency, effectiveness, enforcement of law, control of corruption, and so on. A successful smart city sets example for replication in, order, in other urban areas and shows dynamism to adjust the emerging realities. Distinguished delegates, in Bangladesh, urbanization is both rapid and inevitable. Our capital city, Dhaka, is the world's most densely populated city with more than 10,000 people living per square kilometer. The urban population in Bangladesh is projected to reach 112 million by 2050, which was only 43 million in 2011. Given the rapid pace of population growth, Bangladesh has no option but to make appropriate endeavors that can best address the challenges of rapid urbanization. We pursue towards compact, networked, resilient, competitive, inclusive, and smart urban development. Quite logically, Bangladesh is well connected to the idea of building smart cities. One of our core development objectives is known as Digital Bangladesh, which is a branding of government for transforming Bangladesh into an ICT, where three ICT-based priorities of Digital Bangladesh, namely developing human resources ready for 21st century, connecting citizens in a way most meaningful to them, and taking services to citizens' doorsteps. Although Bangladesh has not yet officially launched any smart city program, some elements do exist which will facilitate its journey towards formally building smart cities in the country. The pivotal digital Bangladesh program will provide the basic ICT platform to this end. Let me illustrate a few of the initiatives undertaken by our government through Digital Bangladesh in recent years. E-administration is a service whereby all public information is being made accessible in our mother language, Bangla, through electronic means and mobile phones. All official notifications and circulars are being published online. Development of a national e-service system is underway. Under this system, public offices will be connected to even rural level for online delivery services. For efficient documentation of public offices, e-filing system has been introduced. The government has formalized encouragement of innovations through forming an innovation team in all public offices. In September 2014, our government has launched e-citizen services. Since 2009, applications for admission, registration at public universities, colleges, and all public medical colleges are being done. Through SMS services, all public examination results are also being delivered through text messages to mobile phones since 2009. Bills of various public utilities such as electricity, gas, and water can now be paid online or via mobile phones. Ladies and gentlemen, accelerating growth empowering citizens is the theme of our ongoing medium-term development plan known as seventh five-year plan. It has adopted a broad-based strategy of inclusiveness with a view to empowering every citizen to participate in full and to benefit from the development process. At present, we have 11 city corporations and 328 municipalities functioning as an urban local bodies. We firmly believe that empowering urban local bodies will lead to empowering people and vice versa. All urban local bodies are now run by elected representatives. City corporations in big cities have been empowered with a specific authority 
to coordinate with other government departments serving in the city areas. Citizens are engaged in different committees and forums for better management of services and generation of innovative ideas. For innovative ideas, we consider urban local bodies as people's closest organizations. Therefore, we, from our national budget, regularly provide financial support for implementing their development programs. At the empowering people end free and fair election with citizens voting right, bringing service to their doorsteps, participation in development prioritization, and special provision for low-income groups are ensured resulting in improved accountability and transparency. Ladies and gentlemen, my ministry provides support and work closely with urban local bodies in an area of planning, infrastructure development, service expansion, and capacity building. Now I'd like to share some of the complex realities that our urban local bodies face today in meeting citizens' needs. Rapid urbanization and coping with rapid development in ICT requires large investment, huge investment. Considering countries' economic development and financial capacity of our city corporation, we need to explore affordable financial options. Climate change has posed a challenge to our development, especially in urban areas. We need to equip our cities with appropriate technologies and know-how for undertaking adapted and mitigating interventions. Different departments manage different services in city areas. Each department has their own database and program for use of ICT in delivering services. To improve efficiency, our city corporations need to learn more about integration of these services. Distinguished participants, Considering today's local and global realities, I firmly believe cities have no better options but to transform them into smart ones. A smart city congress facilitates continuing interactions amongst policymakers, city leaders, and planners. It also helps maintain network based on their requirements. A smart city movement supports interaction with citizens improves city dwellers' level of satisfaction and contribution in, into, in improving governance indicators. I hope participants will, through their active engagement, reciprocally enrich themselves to achieve a common goal of sustainable development. Let me offer my heartfelt congratulations to the organizer for initiating this successful movement. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Mr. Hussain, for sharing some of the initiatives you've been trialing in Bangladesh and using. Okay, our final speaker to open this Congress is Gila Gamil, who is the Minister for Social Equality of Israel. She does a wide range of activities from promoting minority owned businesses to supporting senior citizens whilst also running the Digital Israel Project. So please welcome to this podium, Ms. Gamil. Dear friends, shalom and good morning. I am delighted to be with you as Israel's first ever minister for social equality. The digital transformation underway now is one of the greatest revolutions society had witnessed since the Industrial Revolution. Swiftly and quietly, History has been written before our eyes. Our wealth, our treasure, is our human intellect. 
Israel has become known as a startup nation. We must strive to be a startup nation of equal opportunity for all. In the first decades of our state, we made the barren desert bloom with orange trees and drip systems. Now, from cyber secure smart cities to digitizing government and medical services, we are making our desert bloom high tech. Israel has been the forefront of discoveries and innovations in the field of technology, medicine, and science. Knowledge which we have shared with people all over the world. This is why I'm happy to be with you here today at the 2017 Smart City Expo World Congress. This is the future. Ladies and gentlemen, it used to be the geographic distance was an excuse for inequality. In today's digital world, geography has become irrelevant. The digital transformation our society is undergoing gives us the tools to give all our citizens equal opportunities. I strongly believe the digital technology is a central key to reducing social gaps in society. A member of the D5 top digital countries, Israel is also a world leader in the field of cyber security. We are making our major cities both smart cities and cyber protected cities. This will ensure that a citizen's personal information stays just that, protected from cyber attack. To progress with the quality of life offered by the digital world, we need to be sure that our smart cities are protected. Like conventional terror attacks, cyber warfare does not only severely disrupt a country's economy, but can cause physical harm to ordinary civilians going about their day-to-day -day life. Since its founding, Israel has been committed to a vision of a society of equal opportunity. Our Declaration of Independence guarantees equal rights for all citizens regardless of gender, ethnicity, or religion. To ensure equal opportunities for all, we have also launched the first ever digital region in the middle of the Negev Desert. It is amazing to be turning the remotest part of the country, which make up nearly 40% of the territory of the state, into a hub for innovation in IoT. It crosses geographic regions, from cities to rural areas, from the north to the south, from government to medicine to education, and most important, crosses all sectors of society. It brings people of different faiths, different ethnicities, different cultures, together and on a level playing field. This is at the heart of my vision to use technology to advance all sectors of society. And this is something which can be done in Barcelona, throughout Spain and all over the world. As in other countries around the world, major gaps exist in the technological infrastructure of our cities, some of which are top international high-tech centers like Tel Aviv, which has won Smart Cities Prize right here in Barcelona, while others 
lag behind. We are creating broadband digital platforms to ensure that there is an equal and uniform technological infrastructure for all cities throughout Israel. We have set a goal that by the end of next year, no city in Israel will lack basic digital abilities, including advanced website, CRM system, Facebook, and GIS. We are also creating an innovation community in the field of smart cities, which will include the latest in state-of-the-art companies, cities, members of the academia, and government officials who deal in the field. This initiative will promote the already strong ecosystem we have in Israel in the area of smart cities. Digital Israel provides online courses with top instructors from the most respected educational institutions around the world to anyone anywhere in Israel. Moreover, we will not leave anyone behind, including those with disabilities. We are committed to a society where we use the possibilities offered by technology so that people with disabilities, as well as special needs, can lead an independent a life as possible. Today, thanks to technological advance, this vision is a reality. Given the proper tools, every city can be a smart city. And for the first time ever, Digital Israel is on display in the fairgrounds here today, along with a sampling of some of the top startups in Israel and leading municipalities. We don't just say we want to share our knowledge with our friends the world over. We mean it. Thank you very much.